Yagwe, and greetings to you all from the Marshall Islands. Regretfully, I cannot join in person, and I apologize for not having ministerial representation to do urgent matters at home. Given the importance of this meeting, I have appointed my senior official as a special envoy to the forum, so the RMI can be properly represented in your deliberations. The RMI is proud to be co-hosting this important forum with Fiji and with USP. By the way, congratulations to USP on their 50th anniversary. Fortunately, modern communication technology allows us to come together, regardless of where we are, and reminds me that one way to cut our transport footprint is to use more e-conferencing. We must use every opportunity to lead by example. On November 22nd, the RMI will be hosting a virtual summit from Manjuro under our leadership of the Climate Vulnerable Forum, another example of utilizing technologies to contain our carbon footprint. Decarbonizing transport at both the local and the international levels is something the RMI has been championing since the Manjuro Declaration. For a long time, it has been the forgotten energy sector, the too hard sector to change. It's time to change that now. The task of this forum is to start an urgent dialogue about how our countries can replace our current transport emissions with affordable, safe, reliable, non-carbon alternatives. At the One Planet Summit in New York, at the margins of the UNGA, I was extremely proud to join Fiji and other progressive high ambition countries in making the commitment to fully decarbonize our own economies by 2050. Transport underpins almost all other economic and social activity in our islands. If we can agree and prepare the right pathway as a region to undertake this transition, it could result in better, cleaner, cheaper, and more accessible transport options for our communities. Even better, if it reduces the large share of government and private revenue currently spent on importing fossil fuels. Cleaner transport means reduce public health costs. Increased accessibility means better service delivery to our communities. Sustainable employment opportunities in a new green industry. The list goes on. There are real barriers, though, to realizing these benefits. Not least among these is the sheer scale of the cost involved in and the need to prioritize funding for this sector, as opposed to every other demand being made. However, this can no longer be used to justify delay. Last month, the IPCC 1.5 report came out. If there was any doubt over the amount of work to do and the urgent need to tackle it, this is now passed. The message from science is very clear. All sectors must do all possible and do it now. For transport, this means there is a large catch-up job to do. We need it to happen at speed and at scale. We need it to be tailored to our unique Pacific transport realities. I would like to offer some brief comments on the actions that RMI is promoting regarding transport and some suggestions that the forum might discuss further. Firstly, we recognize it needs both top-down and bottom-up approaches. At the international level, RMI is extremely proud and grateful to be working with a growing team of Pacific and other high ambition partners in both UNFCCC and IMO. In shipping in particular, the collective Pacific voice has been extremely effective at galvanizing global action. I strongly encourage other leaders to join and support our Shipping High Ambition Coalition and the Tony De Broom Declaration. 
I also suggest you consider recommending the outcomes from this forum as an input to the Talanoa Dialogue in Poland, along with the Climate Vulnerable Forum Virtual Summit. Transition demands a whole of country, whole of sector partnership. Therefore, our NDC explicitly includes national targets for transport. And through our 2050 strategy, we are looking to revise this ambition upward. But there is only so much one country can do. In the rush at Paris to get NDCs written, transport was not specifically mentioned in most NDCs. So one suggestion I am asking you to consider is whether it would be useful to have a regional transport reduction target that we can collectively reference. Next, we recognize that this is a long-term game, that we need to build capacity to undertake it. We need access to expert knowledge in a range of disciplines, and we need the best quality external partners. Our solution to this was to establish with USB the Micronesian Center for Sustainable Transport. We wanted an engine room to drive the transition for RMI and then enable us to cascade the lessons being learned to our neighbors and to the region. I am humbled with the support pledge to this initiative by my fellow Micronesian presidents, small island states leaders, and the region. And I am hardened by the support that is already arriving for our program from our partners in Germany, the UK, Korea, New Zealand, the EC, World Bank, and ADB. On Saturday, the first phase of our new project with Swire Shipping to design, build, and operate a low carbon freighter will be signed. We hope that this prototype will demonstrate not only a new generation of ship, but also a successful public-private partnership with a leading Pacific shipper. Partnerships between government, academia, and industry are going to be essential going forward. And of course, we identified very early that wanting a transition and paying for a transition are two very different things. But financing is a critical barrier that we must address. It is not going to be cheap. It needs an ambitious, coordinated program. It needs to be planned out, budgeted, and monitored. But most importantly, it needs to be started. And this brings me to my final suggestion. For a transition to occur at the speed and scale necessary, a major investment is needed now. It makes sense that this is done as a partnership of countries and other actors. At last year's Transport Ministers Forum, the region gave RMI the responsibility of advancing a major GCF bid for low carbon shipping. As we all know, the GCF is under major strain. And so we have asked MCST and their colleagues to prepare a proposal for your consideration. We are recommending developing a major blended finance program, initially centered around a core obligation of 250 million to GCF, be large in 2019. We have been working closely with an informal grouping of UN agencies and other actors, resulting in a draft proposal, which I have asked my officials to discuss with you over the course of the forum. Our proposal is to convene a working party of key stakeholders as an outcome of this forum and with your approval. An undertaking of the scale needed will require the willing collaboration of all partners. And so I urge you all to consider this proposal seriously. We have now proven in the IMO and at Paris the collective strength of Pacific voices. And I'm now urging you to consider a similar approach to tackling our own domestic shipping emissions. Colleagues, again, my apologies for not being able to join you in person. 
but I'm with you in spirit and assure RMI's commitment in working with you all for a decarbonized future. The late Tony De Bruyne was never shy of reminding us that time is not our friend. Sadly, this is only too true in the context of the work ahead of you. I wish you all well for the next two days of critical discussions, and I look forward to reading a strong, positive, and inspiring outcome document in due course. Como